Hello, welcome to Know the Faith, Defend the Faith. My name is William Hemsworth, and thank you for joining me on this week's program. My guest at this time, she's the author of Sharing Your Catholic Faith Story, and you can find her on nancyhcward.com and joyalive.net. And Nancy Ward, Nancy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. Great to see you. Great to finally meet you in person. I know last time we had some uh, technical difficulties, but we got them worked out, so I'm glad to have you back on. Right. Thank you. And for those watching, this is her great book. Check it out. It's fantastic. All right. So, Nancy, how are things going in Dallas? They are hot, and we got lots of COVID. So we're not real happy right now, but we got the Holy Spirit, so we're going to survive. <laughs> All right. Good deal. Lots of ministry opportunities these days. Oh, most definitely. Same here in Arizona. I mean, we've had a lot of cases. We've kind of phased back on reopening and school openings, but... You know, life goes on. We'll pray. It's good, like good ministry opportunity for people out there that are hurting. Exactly. exactly. So, now with with your book, how I know you're you were, you're a convert to Catholicism. How did the Holy Spirit guide you on your path to Catholicism? He guided me. I didn't realize it at the time. It was more in retrospect. Uh, I loved my Protestant church. I never thought I was not looking for another church. I committed my life to the Lord at a, when I was 15 at a youth camp, youth camp um, experience. But, but I was so shy, I couldn't tell anybody about it. And um, I just kept that with me. I know that, that that was partly the Holy Spirit, or maybe it was always the Holy Spirit that guided me to those things. And I just threw myself even more into church um, participation, participation in my Protestant church. And three years later, my father died, and that was a really a traumatic event for me because it was very sudden. And as I was recovering from that, I, I just was determined that my goal in life was to uh, marry a devout Christian man and establish a Christian family where we could just love each other and have children and just have a beautiful life together. And that was my goal. So when I went to college, I dated a lot, but this one guy, I just really fell in love with him. He had all the qualities that I wanted. Trouble was, he was a Catholic. <laughs> so there was that situation there. And I really know the Holy Spirit guided me because there was a lot of struggle with uh, misunderstanding on my part. I thought I had to be a Catholic to get married in the Catholic Church. That's how little I knew about it. So I had to, but I didn't, of course. And so we got that all straightened out. And I thought, well, you know, I, I really want to, us to be united in the same faith, but I, I cannot right now. I, my, my worship of God is so personal. It's tied up in my church. I really can't, I really can't do that truthfully from my heart. It has to be, um, I wasn't quite ready, you know, to change all that. It was just too big a change for me. So we got married in the Catholic Church, but not with Mass. And somehow, b both families were happy about it. And I, I went back to that church later, and I stood there where Phil and I got married. And I didn't realize at the time, I looked up, and there's this huge, huge Holy Spirit wings covering this whole area where we were. And I thought, yeah, he was there. He was right there. I didn't really notice it that much at the time. And so um, we uh, went away from that town and I went to um, instruction classes. We were in the service and we moved three, three different times we moved and each time I had to kind of start over. And the third time, because I was really trying to try out this Catholic thing, I was trying to try it out with um, no meat on Fridays. And at that time we were just transitioning from the Latin to the regular mat, vernacular mass. And I was like, Trying to we're trying to learn this this lifestyle that I didn't know about, and this this priest said, Nancy, you know enough about Catholicism to be a Catholic. When you get home, just have that priest that married you, baptize you. And I sat there and I thought, you know, he's right. And the more I thought about it, the more I got this peace in my heart, which is a sure sign of the Holy Spirit. Peace in my heart that, that it was time for me. And of course, we moved away from our hometown immediately after uh, we, well, we moved back to Reefley and, I, and I, we did the, the grand trifecta of Saturday afternoon of all the, all the um, 
sacraments and then we moved away from there so i was never back really to where i was um influenced by that Protestant church the thing about it was i was on the staff i was working at that church and it was a really a hard thing for the people of that church for me not to be there and so i was glad that we weren't around and we could kind of start our life some after the service in another place and uh, establish our own um, spiritual, you know, traditions. So it was about three years after my um, marriage that, that I, uh, the Holy Spirit, me um, through my experience, through my experiences, he speaks to me, especially in the early days, through my experiences. And it's like, in retrospect, I can see all of these things and that's a good thing because now I can kind of see how he works in my life, which is different from anyone else's, but not all that different. And I can see how he works in our lives. And, and I can, that helps me to minister to people that um, don't understand how, how the Holy Spirit can, can guide them. Uh, and I can say, this is my experience and yours is different, but he will get you to the place that that he needs for you to be to to um, take that next spiritual step all right so what's the role of the holy spirit in calling us to evangelization and maybe how how has he called you to be an evangelist well i didn't become an evangelist right after um my conversion uh i think that he meets us where we are and um so of course that is uh that is in always in our prayer life and in our family relationships. That's our priority. That's where he's most interested in dealing with us. But he uh, he speaks to me in, in, in all of us in a special ways where our heart is invested. And for me, it's always been my writing. Uh, when I was a child, I did a lot of poetry. I wrote short stories as a young um, mother and uh, he was all, it was always about that. And I began journaling and mostly it's a prayer journal. It's like a dialogue, you know, with him. Now it is, it's developed into that. But, um, I, it was, um, it was really about 15 years later that, um, I mean, I was a cradle Catholic. I'm not a, I was a convert and I was obediently going to the church dutifully, going every Sunday, kids were in religion class, just like all the cradle, cradle Catholics. And that was just fine. We thought we were doing fine. And we had this big crisis in our family. And my husband and I separately just cried out to the Lord to keep our family together. It was really a we just were going through a really bad phase, all of all six of us. We had four children. And um, my husband went on a curcio. They have a men's curcio first, and then I went to the women's curcio. And we really got uh, a good, a good, um, got with a good group of um, Catholics, which is really important for your spiritual life to be with some kind of a ministry group or family groups. But then we moved away. For three years and when we came back uh, the church we settled at was just not it, it we couldn't find a church that was really met our needs but we we just settled in this was one area our kid, we didn't send our kids to catholic school because it was not that great and um so we were having this this crisis came in our life and we went to a um this is when the crisis came when we moved back we went to a life in the spirit seminar okay okay and uh he started going and i didn't think anything about it and so i started going with him and and we kind of helped each other out we went through this course a seven um teachings about how god loves you how the holy spirit works in our life <laughs> and all of this and we were introduced really to the holy spirit in, in this um in this seminar and and we just loved going there and at the very end their tradition is they after you've been through these teachings they pray for you 
for a new infilling of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm sitting in this chair and they have a couple, man and wife, and the priest that's a priest that's praying for me. And they just say this beautiful prayer, and I just get this wonderful, beautiful uh, presence in my in my in my soul. And I it's so much like it's so much like the one on the mountain with the teen, on the teen retreat when I gave my life to the Lord. It's just so, uh, just fill me up completely. And they finished praying. And when I opened my eyes, William, <laughs> it was like that scene in the Wizard of Oz. You know, when Annie Elm's house pops down in Oz, right. okay, Dorothy goes to the door and she slowly opens the door the uh, film changes from black and white to color. And she sees this amazing, beautiful land that she never imagined was a possible to be in. I mean, that initial um, joy of seeing all of this, these beautiful flowers, these beautiful people, and all of this. And that's kind of what happened to me because I never dreamed that life could be like that. I saw everything in a different, like in Technicolor, like I never had that before. It was like I went from, my life went from black and white to Technicolor. And it, we just, um, it was just so fulfilling. And we just started going to daily mass. We started going to Bible studies and prayer meetings and um, learning more and more about the Holy Spirit and evangeliz new evangelization was, was there and uh, just started doing evangelization, but with, you know, groups of people, not individually. For example, one Pentecost, a group of us went to Rome for a conference, Catholic conference. And I remember we were at the Colosseum and we were marching in the, around the Colosseum, praising, singing praise and worship songs. And so they said, now you, you go in pairs and talk to people that you don't know here and tell them about your relationship with the Lord. And I'm like, okay, what well, I don't know about this. We had the best time. I just completely forgot about my you know, shyness and all of that. And we just talked to people and just, just for a few, we did there for about a couple of hours, just talked to people and we didn't know them. So we knew we were never going to see them again. It was really a good, good thing to do. And so I could do that, but I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't really equipped to evangelize one-on-one. -on -one. That that kind of came later, you know, with the um, when I started a workshop. I started a workshop for uh, women, okay. and uh, I I really wanted to. Well, before that, let me say this: before that, I did a lot of research on evangelization during this time. And um, when we got back from that conference, I was doing some research and I found this, uh, I found out that uh, Pope John Paul II, that dear saint, told a, taught, taught that the most effective way to evangelize is through our personal witness. And I thought, okay, now I'm talking to these people with a group, but, but I'm not really giving my personal witness. How could, how could I do that? And everywhere that I looked or read or everything from homilies to radio programs, the same scripture came to me and I would write it down in my journal. And I had it in there like every, it seemed like every day that scripture was there and it was first Peter three 15. I'll always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. And I thought, okay, that must be a personal scripture for me because the Holy Spirit's been giving it to me like dozen of dozens of times, right. literally, during this time. So I thought, okay, how, how can I do this? I, you know, I, I'm not a theologian. I'm not, not a scripture scholar. I, I don't really to do this. And... Um, so with, when Pope John Paul, when I got this quote from Pope John Paul about how the most effective way is through our personal witness, I realized that maybe I could do that. 
I mean, I don't always have my Bible with me or my catechism so I can look something up and answer people's questions, but I always have with me my personal witness of what God has good, done to me, the, the good news of my life in him. And so I started doing that and I started the blog and I, I collected stories and I put the stories on the blog and I started a workshop for women and uh, to help them organize their story and, um, and, and a workshop that, where you share it one-on-one -on -one at the workshop. And so this led to a DVD of the three te basic teachings. And because I, I, I'd go to these, I'd give more workshops and they'd say, where's the book? And so then I had to, so that was a nudge from the Holy Spirit to do the book. And so uh, it, it's just um, my whole relationship with the Holy Spirit sort of culminated with the book because that's how he was speaking to me. And let me share, let me just share you what, what the Holy Spirit means to me. This is the um, dedication of my book. To the Holy Spirit, wisdom and grace, gift giver and guide, comforter and counselor, defender and reminder, inspirer and initiator of evangelization. And that kind of sums up my relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's what he is to me. Amen. Now, what, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that your personal story has an impact on someone else. Someone has to hear your story because it'll resonate with them differently than if someone else were to say it. What would you say to someone who's hesitant on getting out there, maybe sharing their story, whether it be online, in person, or any other medium? I would say the first thing, this sounds a little harsh, but it's really not about you. Okay. It's about the Holy Spirit um, teaching you or instilling in you the love of God, which he's the love between the Spirit, between the Father and the Son. I mean, that's his manifestation. Manifestating that in you to remind you and to teach you that God's love is not, it's not to, to, for you and your experiences. They may be personal. They may be private and personal. No, they're personal, but they're not private. They're given to you for others. And he will instill in you this love for others that surpasses your shyness or your hesitation or thinking about what will people think because the Holy Spirit has to be in control. You have to surrender that to the Holy Spirit and just let him use you in a way that you never imagined. And it's just so rewarding that the first time you do that, you can't believe how great you feel about yourself and your relationship with God. And, and you just want to do it again. And he'll tell, he'll set up the, he sets up the, the Holy Spirit sets up the meeting let's say it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting or maybe it's a talk before an audience and he sets that up for you and he nudges you in that direction and he helps you to focus on that audience in front of you, whether it's two people, one person or a whole parish. And he gives you the words. I mean, you prepare, but he gives you the, the words to say, like you said, to that specific audience, that they won't hear anywhere else and that no one else can influence them in the way that you can. And remember, the whole, you're not doing it on your own. The Holy Spirit is doing all of that. You're just cooperating with those nut, nudges that he uh, gives you to do the next thing. Exactly. It all goes back to first, the scripture that, keeps, that kept coming back to you, 1 Peter 3.15. There's a reason for our hope. And the the reason that we have is going to resonate with someone else. Now, Nancy, I want to get back to your book for a moment. What was the process of, of writing the book, of putting it all together? Because you have a lot of contributors in there as well. Right. Well, when they, when they were asking for a book, I had the DVD, which was three basic teachings, pretty, pretty short talks, really. Uh, but they were just right for a workshop where you could do the, do the um, exercises in between. So 
so it was the Holy Spirit really. He he took those three teachings and he expanded. And I think we have ten ten chapters. And because one one of the teachings is about my conversion story, and where I tell it in a way that goes through the structure that I, I give them. And so that's one chapter. And then there's my renewal story. That's another chapter. And I have a chapter in there about Mary, how Mary teaches us to evangelize. And that was completely uh, of the Holy Spirit. I, I really started writing about it and he just kind of kind of took over on that one. I, I, can, I can point to his influence on every single page of that book. But so we had the we had that, and so that's the first part of the book, was the expansion of the workshop, and my story, and uh, all about uh, how we evangelize, why we evangelize, and and then uh, my experiences, how to ways to tell your story, all of that. It's, it's called uh, the story is sharing your Catholic faith story, and the subtitle is tools, tips. That's the first part. And then testimonies. Testimonies is the second part, and it has 30 testimonies of Catholics. Some of them are uh, conversion stories. Some of them are renewal stories like mine, where you just had this beautiful experience. Uh, so it's not just all converts. It's many cradle Catholics that have had a renewal experience that just set them on fire with the zeal of the Holy Spirit, and that's lasts them their life to be um, in ministries, especially or to minister their family in a new way. And some of them, we have vocation stories also. So um, we, all of us together, these 30, they all, uh, the, many of their stories were on the blog, but they were expanded or rewritten. And then um, it's just, it was just a beautiful experience. I had a really good editor, a very, um, a Catholic, very devout Catholic that, you know, kept things straight and got everything just just the right way, and I know she's very devoted to the Holy Spirit too. So it's it's like it was like okay, Holy Spirit, you know, we're doing the hard, we're doing the drudgery work, but it's so joyful when we got it finished, and so many people um, received it so beautifully. That was we published it about a year ago, last May. Yeah, it's a little over a year ago. So um, it's yeah. It's, it's really a great book, a lot of great tools in there and the stories in there are, like I said, they're, they're really inspirational. So check out the book. Again, it's Sharing Your Catholic Faith Story. And like Nancy said, the subtitle, Tools, Tips, and Testimonies. Now, Nancy, how, how can the Holy Spirit help us to evangelize in the times that we're in, you know, with the pandemic and the racial strife? Well, well right now <laughs> I'm surprised but not so shouldn't be surprised at anything the Holy Spirit does, but the Holy Spirit is using this book to help all of us you know get through this pandemic without this transition. I, I don't know what our new life's gonna be like, but it's it's not gonna be the same. We're gonna have to be very um disciplined and very uh, oh, flexible. Uh and I I didn't know that this book was gonna be uh used for this purpose but i guess the holy, spirit, the holy spirit did but this book book has some answers for people that are that are hurting um you see we're in this pandemic which i describe as the coronavirus cocoon and my experience in the last few months has been that god has been forming me in a very uh harsh way sometimes and mostly gentle but in some harsh real during some harsh realities he is forming me to be the person that he wants me to be that he created me to be to cope with all of this when it's finally over in texas we're still pretty much um confined or we have a mandate for to wear masks we've we got a lot of things going on here uh, that are still like they were two or three months ago and so but there's all of these experiences and struggles that we're going through and God and the Holy, the Holy Spirit has taken us through this. And why are, why are we going through this? We are going through this so that we can emerge as encouragers to those that are lacking faith. Those that are desperate for, for hope. And as, as the scripture says, we're supposed to always be ready 
to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. We have to give them our hopeful stories. We have to tell them what, what God did to, uh, with us during this pandemic and how he helped us in our struggles. For example, William, let me ask you. Sure. How has God loved you through the last couple of months? A specific story that you could share of how God um, gave you hope when, when you really needed it. Uh, maybe like me, you failed to trust him at times and, and when you were miserable, I'd, I'd happen to that. And did he abandon you or did he reveal his great love for you during that time? Never abandoned me. Uh, through this whole experience, I've actually feel like I've drawn closer. It's been an opportunity for me to slow down a little bit, reflect on all the blessings that he's given me, develop a more disciplined prayer, scripture reading routine. And it's helped me, it's helped me evangelize to those around me, to my family, my friends, my coworkers. And probably the best reminder of how he's with us is just two days ago, my my nephew was born. What a great blessing that is, right? Just a reminder of just the miracle of life. God is still working through through all this. It's a reminder of what's important. That's that's the big message he's given me through this whole thing. You know, there's just, just so many things we can do. Um, you know, you think about the people out there, how, how they just need this hope. See, if you tell them about that story, Tell him that. They'll, that gives people hope. There's somebody that really needs to hear that. And the Holy Spirit fills in all of, all of the gaps that how we, how we need to express ourselves to others. But you need to, you, you need, I know that you make yourself available to people because that, that way God can use you. But maybe if you don't know what they're feeling, or then you don't you don't even think they might not even be going through exactly the same struggles that you are. You can bring hope to them by just being friendly. Uh, for example, uh, let's say you go on a walk this afternoon or tomorrow around your neighborhood, and there's you see that woman over there sitting on her porch all by herself. Go over there and don't just wave at her. Go over there and in a safe distance, introduce yourself to her. Ask her what her story is and listen carefully to her. Encourage her and tell her how much her story means to you that she would share that with you. You see? And so you, you've not just made a friend. You've let the Holy Spirit work through you to bring somebody hope. And every time you go by that house, You've got a friend there, and you have a story about how God used you to write down in your journal to share with others. That's where we get our stories. We journal our experiences with God, and we have incidents in our life, those beautiful God moments. Some of them are big ones, like the Oz story <laughs> or the commitment on the mountain when I was a teen. Lots of big and the, the stories like that, but there's little things that happen in our life all the time. Just, and, and you're not, uh, you, you're not, when you tell these stories about yourself and your relationship with the Holy Spirit and how he's used you, you're not bragging about how well you're surviving this pandemic. You know, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do as a Christian, and that is giving glory to God. You, it's not about you. It's about what God is doing in you and your world. And, and it's not, you don't talk about, of course, anything about how your own efforts, because it's not through your own effort. It's all the Holy Spirit. And that's just a great way to encourage people, even if you don't know them very well. Uh, there is a, you know, he uses everything in your life, even what you wear. Uh, a few, a few, Weeks ago, I went to Walmart. I went into Walmart to, just to grab a prescription. Okay, and I'd been to church, and I had on this beautiful dress that had big, flashy butterflies on it. And these two women came. Look at her dress! Oh, look at your dress! We like your dress. And they said, "We just saw some butterflies outside." And they started talking about how how they were um, 
just had visited their mother. And I said, oh, I, well, I got this dress right before my mother died and I wore it to her funeral because butterflies to me mean new life. So whenever I see butterflies, I think about new life. And they said, we're going to remember that when we hear butterflies. We just thank you so much for talking to us and sharing that with us. And I'm like, five minutes, you know, even what I was wearing, the God used, you know, and I just remember that story. And it's like little things like that. So I wrote it down and, and I did a little blog on it and it was on Catholic mom, I think, and some other sites. And it was like, this is just one little experience. That, and, and it was all, it was all a Holy Spirit. And I wasn't even thinking about evangelizing. I was thinking about getting in there, getting my prescription and getting home. And five minutes, that's all. It and, and, so you just got to always be ready, you know, always be ready. And he told me, that he reminded me, reminded me about when I got that dress. And that was quite a few years ago that I got that dress and I did wear it to my mother's funeral. So it was just so, such a sweet, um, sweet, sweet story to be able to share God's hope to others. And that's it's just kind of the way we, the way he works with me is, is that if I'm open enough, then he, he, he gives me the opportunity, he gives me the, the, the what to say. And, and it, it just really lifted my spirits a lot that day also. You just never, you never know the hope and encouragement that your words can give. So don't shy away from it. Let the Holy Spirit work through you, like Nancy said. And, right. and Nancy, I, th I appreciate you coming on again today. But where can our listeners learn more about you and more about your ministry? Well, I have the, it's the Sharing Your Catholic Faith Story. It's uh, nancyhcward.com is my author um, speaker page and then i have um joyalive.net is the blog where i share a lot of stories and, and a lot of um, things about evangelization uh, we also have a new facebook group where people can share their experiences and it's called your catholic story so you can request to join that and you get a lot of good uh, dialogue with other people about evangel evangelizing through our personal witness on that one too. Amen. Nancy, again, thank you very much for coming on again. It's uh, great to see you on video to finally meet this way. It, it was a, had a good time learning more about the Holy Spirit and what it could do with us. And thanks again. God bless. All right. God bless you as well.